The first passengers ever to ride in a hot air balloon were a sheep, a duck, and a chicken. That eight-minute flight took place in France in 1783. Today's hot air balloons work on the same principle. The burner heats the air, the balloon envelope holds the air, and the basket carries the passengers. Only today's passengers tend to be humans. Hot air balloons fall under government aircraft regulations, so their engineering has to meet very specific performance and safety standards. Once the technical design gets approval, the factory works on the graphic design. The computer renders the graphics into plans that resemble a giant jigsaw puzzle. Each piece has a code number. The computer generates a paper template for each one. Balloons usually fly in the early morning when they're still dew on the ground. So the nylon fabric with which they make the balloon envelope has a silicone coating to repel moisture that would generate mold and mildew. After tracing each template with grease pencils, they cut the fabric by hand and mark the corresponding code number on the back of each piece. Then, following the plan, seamstresses sew the pieces together like a giant quilt using heavy-duty thread. The type of seam they stitch is the strongest possible, what you typically see on jeans. They sew the seams to nylon straps called webbing. These run both horizontally and vertically, forming a giant grid. Should the fabric rip, the seam and webbing combined prevent the tear from spreading. Hot air balloons often carry a corporate logo. Workers divide the design into components, project each one onto a piece of fabric, trace it and cut it out. They first glue, then sew the components to the balloon in one of two ways, either into the fabric or on top of it, as we see here. Stainless steel aircraft cable connects the balloon envelope to the basket below. Workers slip a plastic sleeve, then a copper sleeve over one end, then loop the cable. They line the loop with a stainless steel thimble. This thimble will protect the aircraft cable from damage due to wear and tear. They crimp the copper sleeve to lock the loop. After taking various measurements to ensure everything conforms to strict specifications, they wrap tape around the sharp end of the crimp, then, using an industrial heat gun, shrink wrap the plastic sleeve over it to seal the connection. The basket is made of wicker or a similar natural material woven over a stainless steel frame. Wicker is flexible enough to absorb the shock of a bumpy landing. They cover the bottom edges with rawhide to protect the wicker when it scrapes against the ground. They pad, then cover the top edge in suede or leather for comfort when you're leaning on it to admire the view. These nylon poles, called uprights, fit into the frame. They support the burners above the basket. Hot air balloons run on propane, the same stuff gas barbecues use. Only a barbecue produces about 70,000 BTUs of heat, while a hot air balloon's two burners together generate 30 million BTUs, enough to warm a large building. After connecting the basket to the burner frame with cables, they cover the cables and uprights in protective padding. Then they hook up the hoses running from the burners to the propane tanks housed in the basket. Now for the final assembly. First, they tip the basket onto its side. Then they take those looped cables they made earlier and hook one end to the frame of the burner system. The other end is already hooked up to the balloon envelope. One cable to every vertical strip of webbing. Depending on its size, a balloon has between 12 and 28 of them. They form the skeleton of the balloon, carrying the weight of the craft and its passengers. After laying out the balloon envelope, they use a fan to inflate it partway with cold air. This takes 5 to 20 minutes, depending on the size of the balloon. Then they fire up the burners to heat the cold air. It expands to fill the envelope. The fabric near the burners is fire resistant. Because hot air weighs less than cold air, it rises, pulling the balloon upright and off the ground. You control vertical movement by manipulating the envelope air temperature. To ascend, you turn the burner flames higher. To descend, you pull a cord to vent hot air at the top. You can't... The trick is to ride different wind currents.